Now, let's do, let's do the actual molecular pathway. There'll be no test on this, so don't worry about this. But this is what happens when you have too much omega-6 fatty acids in the diet. Uh, the primary omega-6 fatty acid is called linoleic acid. It's acted upon by various enzymes which are controlled by the hormone insulin. The higher the levels of insulin, the more active these enzymes are, and the more they drive the seemingly benign omega-6 fatty acids toward toxic fat. And when that happens, your health takes a major impact. And this particular enzyme that is a key factor that makes toxic fat in your body, it's under profound dietary control. You have the ability to turn it on or off by your diet. Inhibitors are things like the omega-3 fatty acid called EPA. Other inhibitors are that hormone glucagon stimulated by the protein in your diet. But the carbohydrate in your diet basically activates it. So as a balance of protein and carbohydrate become out of sync, this particular one key enzyme is now activated to make more and more toxic fat. Now what happens as you basically make more toxic fat? Well, here's our, the, really the damage that comes from the perfect nutritional storm. We're making increased toxic fat, and that gives more inflammation. We have less omega-3s in the diet. We no longer have our insurance policy. And this ratio of these two fatty acids begins to increase. And when that happens, you become sicker, you become fatter, you become dumber. And that's a pretty good description of the American population today. <laughs> And what's happening here is that good genes, because it's all about our genes, good genes are now turning bad. They're turning on us. That things in our, ge our, our genetics, in our DNA, many thousands of years ago, are now being turned against us. Things which allowed us to survive as a species and basically carry on are now basically being turned against us. 10,000 years ago, we didn't know where our next meal would come from. Those of us who could store excess calories as fat would be more likely to reproduce and pass their genes on to the next generation. Today in America, we define famine as more than two hours between meals. Eighty years ago, there were no drugs. The classical picture of the doctor was that Norman Rockwell picture, the doctor holding his hand, saying, I hope the fever will break. If you had a strong, robust immune system, you could fight off the bacterial infection and you would live. If you had a weak immune system, you would die. Those who lived could pass their genes on to the next generation. Well, today, due to public health advances, we're not under microbial attack all the time. But a new agent, our diet, is turning on that robust immune system to turn against us. We have to realize that our genes still live in the Stone Age. Unfortunately, we eat and live in the 21st century. And there's the disconnect. It's this disconnect between the food we eat and our genes that's increasing the production of silent inflammation. Well, that doesn't sound too good, does it? But can you combat it? Well, yes, you can. It's not that hard. Because your first line of defense is the reduction of inflammatory fat. That's a different statement than saying lose weight. That's even different than saying losing fat. You want to lose inflammatory fat. Here in your adipose tissue is ground zero for an inflammatory attack on the rest of your body. This is where you draw the line in the sand, in the fat cells. Now here's a recent article, well, not that recent, but um, an article from Newsweek talking about when fat attacks. Now we think of fat as basically little balls of lard that makes it very difficult to fit into designer clothing. Nothing can be further from the truth. Your adipose tissue, your fat cells, are powerful hormonal generators. And they can turn against you. And they can start turning out hormones, inflammatory hormones, that begin to basically destroy the rest of the body's functionality. So the question is, what is the best diet to reverse silent inflammation? And since it's a different question, 
the answers may be different. I said earlier, everybody's an expert in nutrition. That's why you see at least a thousand new books appearing every year on diet. Today, there's some 15,000 books in print by such experts as Suzanne Summers, who brought us the Thigh Master. <laughs> um, but in reality, there are only four diets known in the medical science. Uh, and they're all based on what is called the glycemic load. This is, tells you how rapidly carbohydrates enter into the bloodstream. You can have a very low glycemic load diet, a moderate glycemic load diet, a high glycemic load diet, or a very high glycemic load diet. That's all there is. That's it. One of those four will be the best diet to reduce silent inflammation. Now the common names for these diets might be the Atkins diet. Don't eat any carbohydrates. They're bad, evil. Possibly it could be a winner. A common name for the moderate glycemic load diet would be the zone diet. You need some carbohydrates, but not too much. A common name for the high glycemic load diet might be the United States USDA Food Pyramid, the American Heart Association diet, the American Cancer Association diet, the American Diabetes Association diet, the American fill-in-the-blank chronic disease diet. <laughs> they could be winners too. And of course, the common name for the very high glycemic load diet is the typical American diet. <laughs> so you're probably already guessing that the last one will not be a contender. So we're left now with the three. And that's why we begin to use science to say which of the three will basically reduce silent inflammation, since we can now measure it. But it's just not the glycemic load that's important. It's also the amount of protein. It's like a carburetor of a car. You can't run a car on gas, and you can't run a car on air. You need some combination. Why do you need protein? Well, you need that to stabilize blood sugar levels by increasing glucagon production, and protein releases another hormone in the gut. It's called PYY. It's not a very clever name, but this is the hormone that goes directly to the brain that says, stop eating. And so what you need is a balance. And it's a bell-shaped curve. And that says there's not one balance for everyone, because not everyone is genetically the same. But here's a broad bell-shaped curve. At one end, on a high carbohydrate diet, you're making lots of insulin. And for most Americans, as I'll show you how, that that will lead to fat accumulation. See, people like to think, if no fat touches my lips, no fat reaches my hips. It sounds great in marketing, but it doesn't hold true in terms of biochemistry. That's how you fatten cattle. You feed them lots and lots of low-fat grain. Well, let's go swing to the other side. I have a high-protein, low-carbohydrate diet. Now I'll get too much of the hormone glucagon, and one of the results of that is to put out more of the stress hormone called cortisol and cortisol makes you fat. So between those two extremes lies the answer, a zone. A zone of balancing the glycemic load of the diet and the amount of protein. Is there one ratio for everyone? Of course not. But you find out where you are on that bell-shaped curve by doing what? Listening to your body. Your body is trying to carry on a conversation with you desperately, 24-7. All you have to do is learn how to listen to it. And this is what the zone diet is. And I like to say that the people in my own company, you know, country, company say, I understand, but they really don't. It has nothing to do about weight loss. It has everything to do about reducing inflammation. The key, and that's why it's an anti-inflammatory diet. The key aspect is based on the glycemic load and it's based on the balance of protein, carbide, and fat, which means you have to think a little. That's the hard part. What drives the interest of the medical community? It's a diet without hunger. If you can get that right balance, you won't be hungry. Not because of willpower, because of better hormonal control. So how do you basically listen to your body? You eat a meal, and you look at your watch. And if you aren't hungry, in the next four to six hours, 
whatever you ate at that last meal was hormonally okay for your genes. So that's why you carry on a dialogue with your body. It's a flexible program. You can eat whatever you want to as long as you maintain the balance of the glycemic load and protein. And it's a moderate approach. That means basically you can probably follow it for a lifetime. And that's the key. You can do this for a lifetime. The word diet comes from the ancient Greek root, which means way of life. We've corrupted that to think of diet as a short-term period of hunger and deprivation. It's a way of life. And for what purpose? To control inflammation. And that's why in every carefully controlled study that's ever been published in the medical literature that's compared the zone diet to every other diet, the zone diet has been found to be superior in insulin control, superior in blood sugar control, superior in blood lipid control, superior in appetite suppression, superior in fat loss, and superior in reduction of inflammation. I'm not a greedy guy. I'm just waiting for one study that shows that any other diet is as good as a zone diet in controlling the things which will control your future. And talking about it as an anti-inflammatory diet, here's some data from Harvard looking at the USDA food pyramid versus the zone. Same number of calories. The weight loss was the same, but the reduction of silent inflammation on the zone diet was nine times greater than the diet being recommended to Americans. This is a study we published several years ago comparing the Atkins diet to the zone diet. On the Atkins diet, within a period of six weeks, you can double the levels of silent inflammation. Oh, you lose weight, but basically you're now accelerating the aging process in the process. Uh, two processes there. Now, why the zone diet works? Because it decreases insulin secretion. It decreases the intake of omega-6 fatty acids. The end result, you make less toxic fat. You make less toxic fat, you live longer, you look better in a swimsuit, and I'll show you in the next lecture, you perform much better. Now, when I first brought up my first book in 1995, I was marked as the most dangerous man of America. I'm a pretty easygoing guy, but you know, but I said, this man is evil, as if I had the 666 in Boston my head. Well, de a decade later, the Joslin Diabetes Research Center at Harvard Medical School announced their new guidelines for treating obesity and diabetes. And when they came out, I said, this looks oddly familiar. <laughs> and about 40% of low glycemic load carbohydrates, 20 to 30% low fat protein, 30 to 40% monounsaturated fat. I said, guys, you're right on. Now, somehow in the press release or the dietary guidelines, the word zone got misplaced there, but that's okay. Because even a higher authority gave validation to the zone. Parade Magazine. <laughs> you, you can't go any higher than that. And so this is now Parade Magazine. Here's how you lose weight and keep it off. Basically the zone diet. Again, not exactly, but it's that bell-shaped curve. You find what's the right balance, and how do you know? As long as you've got a cheap Timex watch like I do, it's easy. <laughs>